Yeah, I'm the same way, man. <laughs> what do you what do you find it what do you find it passionate in now? Is it jujitsu? It seems like you picked up the gi and you, you're I back love into it. Well, I love jujitsu for a couple aspects. One, it's a never ending learning process, right? So how can you not for me personally, I love those things. How can you not fall in love with something where the end state moves along with you? Mm-hmm. Like you'll never master it. So I love that. But also there is a crazy element of psychological and physiological readiness in there as well. Having, I mean, it's not jujitsu. I, I say this as a concept. It's not hard, but being very good at it or proficient in it is very hard. It's, it's weight and leverage and angles and an, you know, that's really easy to say those three things and you're going to get smashed for years on the mat because you have to learn those things incrementally. The concepts of shooting, not that hard, right? Mm -hmm. Stance, how do you hold a gun, side alignment, manage and control your trigger. Easy to say. We could go out to a range right now and people would be shooting into the ground in front of them. It would be like, (laughs) you know, a shotgun pattern because it's easy to say it's hard to do. But I love jujitsu because it keeps my mind sharp and I do view it from the perspective of self-defense. And you need to hear this, people, not self-offense. I don't want to get in a fight. Yeah. I don't fucking want to get in a fight. Yeah. But if you force me to that place, I'm going to be as capable and competent as humanly possible. And if you force me into that place where there's weapons involved, you need to stand the fuck by because I'm still training on those things as well. So I think the most uh, rewarding thing that I do at this point, one would be going and talking to organizations and people about leadership, but that's off the table right now. So that would be probably the thing I'm the most passionate about. But I think we're touching more people now Yeah, doing this. Yeah, it seems like an, uh, uh, it always has seemed that way in the last few years since I started my podcast that it's becoming a thing, right? Yeah. Um, podcasting, you know, long form versions of it are, uh, you know, you're that quiet, you're that third person in the room yeah. able to digest all that information. Um, are you gi or no gi? I do both. You do both, okay. Um, most of the cla- – well, the classes that we take are uh, wearing a gi, but definitely an open mat. I'll pop the gi top on and off. And I think a lot – I was actually with a conversation with uh, Rogan about this because I was asking him. He came up um, – I know he got his black belt from one of the Machadas, and I, and I it might have been Jean Jacques, but he got also a black belt from uh, Eddie Bravo, which is specifically no gi. And I think he did more of that than gi rolling. So I asked him how – he approaches rolling with a gi and the thing with a gi it, it, like there's door handles you're just like yeah yeah which is not there except for in montana like your flannel would is pretty much a gi i could choke yeah. you to death with a gi or any great you know I mean? gi yeah it's it is even t-shirts if unless the seams don't rip you can get choked to death with a goddamn beefy t hanes mm-hmm. but in montana sweatshirts jackets it's pretty common but talking to joe he's like when i roll with the gi I just don't take those grips. So that way what he is doing is not reliant upon clothing. Ooh. And I like that, right? He's why adaptable. why yeah. rely on a single point of failure? I yeah. mean, that's that's like a day one shit for us. I don't want to have a tactic that only works. It's like, hey, here's a great tactic, asterisk, if they're wearing a jacket. Mm. What about That's just it? the benefit. Yeah. What if we're at the beach? You know, mm-hmm. like and we got no jacket, no shirts, and we're wearing shorts. It has to work there. So yeah. I always approach jujitsu from a perspective of being able to handle myself, and the thing is, like, the more I learn about it, the least, the less likely I am. I don't want to go and do that shit in a bar. I don't want to hurt anybody because you learn about it. And you're like, okay, it's it's, it's kind of not even fair. Yeah, oh yeah. When you encounter when people you encounter who somebody who doesn't oh, know God. anything, but they think they're a badass. Yeah. it's so easy. It is easy, and yeah. you know what though? The easier thing is fucking walk away. Yeah, buy them a beer and walk away. Yeah. Are you? Um, is your body holding up? Yeah, very well actually. Really? Yeah. So I But I'm in fucking indestructible. There's never been somebody built like me. Yeah, that's I true. <laughs> gangly and tall, <laughs> lanky. Yeah, no, it's I got my I got miles on the old uh f- meat vehicle that I walk around. Yeah, your your back's good? Yeah. Knees? Back's knees. Uh I jacked up my elbow a, a couple of weeks ago, which was my fault. Yeah. And I what I do is I listen to my body though. I'm not 20 anymore. I turn 43 next month, and I I don't need to remind myself of that because I wake up every morning and I feel that. Yeah, I feel it too, man. <laughs> so I take it yeah. easy, and I I was really lucky to find a school where the mat culture is awesome. It's not a bunch of 20 year old dudes tatted up, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying the people who if you go to look for a jujitsu school and it's all beefed out dudes in their early 20s smashing each other, and you're a little bit later on in your uh, revolutions around the sun, just realize they're going to treat you like uh, a piranha tank. Yeah. So find a place that has a more balanced mat. The culture is, it's awesome. 
you have death matches for sure, but for the most, it's very chill. And you know, you, I mean, I will escalate if people escalate, but I just try to start at a very chill level. Yeah, my neck, I got a, a compressed disc in C three and four. Yeah, and uh, at the base of my spine, and so, like ch- last time I was rolling, I was rolling with uh, Chad Robichaud, and Chad's a he's a former um, a champion fighter. Um, he's also a, a, a I can't remember what degree black belt in Brazilian jiu- Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, he's a Gracie guy. And he dropped me, like power drove me on my fucking neck. And instantly I felt that nerve kink yeah. out and just blow my neck out. And I was fucking just, I was like, man, am I ever going to get back? And I wondered if it was a conditioning thing besides him planting 240 pounds of my ass on my neck. Which he shouldn't have done, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And he, he, <laughs> he, the way he, he, the way he was moving me, it just set me up for that way. Yeah. And the last, I mean, I blew my hamstring off of my fucking bone in jujitsu in a bad fucking uh, training up for the modern army's combative shit. Yeah. And um, I just, I feel like that probably body. didn't, that probably didn't hurt at all. I feel like, dude, <laughs> that was the, that's the most painful injury I've ever had. It's the cramp that never went away. Oh. It's like, oh, oh. shit, I got a cramp. And you're like, I'm like, oh, God. And then that feeling of, oh, fuck, never went away. And I was like, oh, what what the fuck's going on? And then just in constant pain and then <laughs> surgery, more pain, and then it, it fucking finally went away. Yeah. No, I I try to remember how old I am. Yeah. I want to have as many usable years as possible. But I think pursuits like that will actually extend usable years. I, I, I want to get back in it, man. Yeah. I see you doing this. And I see you, you, you guys are motivating me because I see – Rogan's old ass, you you doing it? I'm Rogan's like, old as fuck. He, I know, seventy four. I think he just turned. Yeah, I can't believe. I'm surprised he moved to Austin. I'm I surprised. don't know much about Austin. I'm not surprised he moved to Texas. I don't know much about the individual I don't cities. Like Austin's not. I, I like Austin. Austin's got good beer, uh, good chow, but Austin is like Cali- uh, Like maybe that's the reason why it's like California. Maybe yeah, but it's just fucking. I don't know, man. It's just uh, Texas. I'm not a fucking. It's too fucking hot there. In Austin, the summer months, you will die, dude. I was in Dallas Fort Worth and it was 106 degrees on the range. We had we had people passing out in the fucking class. I was like, this is not good. That's kind of awesome though. My insurance is gonna fucking <laughs> shit can shit can me. I can't fucking do it. Fuck. What do you want to end with, dude? Yeah, we've been at it for three and a half hours again. Really? Yeah. That's solid. <laughs> I was-